Is your current house gonna sell in five days or like maybe even in five minutes because the market is so hot? But you're not concerned about that. But what you are concerned about is, am I gonna be able to find my new house in time? And how do I get my offer accepted in such a competitive market? Well, my name is Neil Mathwig and I'm with Realty Executive Scooper Spranzi. And this video is for you. This is gonna give you five different options to navigate in today's real estate market. Keep on watching. Option number one is the most traditional option. However, it's not too likely that this is going to happen for you because the market's so competitive. And that is writing your offer subject to the sale of your current house. You see, if you're going up against another offer that doesn't have a subject to sale, the seller most likely is going to take that offer. And if they do take your offer, the chances of you getting bumped are pretty likely. So this idea, this traditional way of doing things just doesn't work too well in this market. However, I don't wanna to be total doom and gloom on this because we have had three clients so far in 2018 navigate by using this process. So writing your offer subject to sale, contingent on the home sale of your home uh, and, and, and securing the new home via this way is a possibility, but I wouldn't go into the market being too hopeful about it. Option number two also isn't for everybody because you're financing both properties. This is where you would have your current mortgage and talk to your lender and see if you can get another mortgage for a new home. We used to call these bridge loans and the lenders don't like that anymore today. So what we do is we just gotta make sure that you have enough in reserve. I know when my wife and I bought our current home, this is what we did, and we had enough in reserve of our current home and uh, I think we needed six months of payments on both properties in reserve. And if we had that, we could qualify for the for, for both properties. Uh, we had to agree that we were gonna get our current home on the market and we had to try to get that sold within six months. And the other nice thing about this market and this option is there's a lot less risk because you don't have to worry so much about the sale of your home uh, in this market, it should sell quick. Option number three is putting an off-market deal together. This is where you would, you know, maybe a for sale by owner, or you would write a letter to a neighborhood, or you would look up old expireds, maybe some houses that didn't sell back in 2012. Reach out to those sellers and see if they would wanna sell today. And you could put an off-market deal together where you write your offer using option number one, which is subject to sale contingency, and you write your offer subject to sale and nobody, they don't have any competition, so you don't have to worry about getting bumped. They're likely to take this offer because they haven't put their house on the market and there's no competition. And um, the seller's advantage of doing all of this is that they, they don't have to deal with showings. They might save on some commission uh, and it might be a good option for them. Um, however, if you're a seller, you probably wanna maximize your exposure and get your house exposed to as many buyers as possible because that can drive up the price. But for you that's looking to sell and buy a new home, an off-market deal might be a really good option. Option number four gives you about 60 days of grace period, and this is what we call a post-occupancy agreement that you would put in, your, in, your, in the sale of your home. So you get an accepted offer, you close, and then after closing, you stay in your current home for up to 60 days. And the reason it's 60 days is because if the buyer is obtaining a mortgage, they are signing on the dotted line saying that we will occupy this home within 60 days. And if they don't do that, they're gonna be in trouble with the lender. Option number five, and I think the most predictable option, is to 
find a rental unit, move into the rental unit, then get your current home sold, and then you're in your rental unit, you can take your time buying, and once you find that perfect property, you have your cash in hand, you have no contingency, and you can go after it. Now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Neil, I don't wanna move twice, and I totally get that. However, there's a lot of wisdom behind doing this. If you can figure out how to move twice, maybe there's certain ways of packing and making things easier, you're gonna put yourself in a better position because you're not gonna be in a rush to sell your current home because you're in a rental unit, right? And and, and it's just kind of the, the ease of finances and you're eliminating the risk and you're positioning yourself to win and strike at that perfect property once it comes on the market. And I know what you're also thinking, Neil, where do I find a rental property? Don't worry, I got you covered. Right below is a link. Click on that link and I'm gonna give you a bunch of options that I've done research on here in Madison that will help you find a rental property. I don't help people find rental properties, but for you, because you watch this video, there's a link below that'll help you. So I hope all of these help you and if you need more help, I'm here. If you're searching in Madison, Wisconsin, I would love to help you navigate through this market. And, uh, and if not, no hard feelings. I hope that this video helped you either way and you should subscribe to this channel because there's more videos just like this that will help you navigate in today's Madison, Wisconsin real estate market. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a great day. And like always, remember to be the reason somebody smiles today.